well, in this uncertain, unpredictable and tough times that all of us are going through at the moment, there's one thing we should never lose, and that is hope. Tonight, we want to make a promise of hope. So hi everybody, good evening and a very warm welcome to everyone who's decided to tune in tonight. It's fantastic that you're joining us and participating in this really special online event. It's the kickoff, the official kickoff of the silent auction, a silent auction being organized by seven different Jane Goodall institutes in Europe. The Jane Goodall Institute Austria is in a leading position and as I'm one of its honorary ambassadors, I have the great honor and pleasure to guide you through this evening and evening and I know that everybody's looking forward to that and evening together with the wonderful and amazing Dr. Jane Goodall. But before, I have the great honor to welcome Jane via Zoom. Let me tell you a little bit more about this silent auction and the idea behind. Well, about 100 different items and articles have been collected during the last few weeks. All of them are extraordinary and can't be bought anywhere else. Well, articles from Austria, Belgium, England, France, the Netherlands, Switzerland and Spain, of course lots of them, with a strong connection to Jane and to her work, Jane and Chimps, others addressing art, fashion, experiences, entertainment, sports, cuisine and travel. Tonight we will of course present some of them. Well, tonight we want to invite and to motivate you to stand up for what you love, to take action, to follow your heart, to bid for your favorite items, to give yourself a treat and to give love, joy and happiness to your beloved ones. For instance, by buying really cool and special Christmas presents. And you don't have to leave your house or your flat for that. And double joy to do good by uh, supporting projects, helping us to make our world a better one. So we can make the difference together. And by supporting this auction, ladies and gentlemen, you can support a wonderful, extraordinary woman who has never stopped giving hope to other people around the globe. And that's why we are really honored and we're all looking forward to this moment that she will accompany us tonight. We should now have built up a life connection to England. And I can say, hopefully, welcome and good evening. Dr. Jane Gooder. Hi, Jane. Good evening. Hello, hello. It's and a, uh, a proper hello, a distance greeting from Gombe. <laughs> this is me. This is Jane in chimpanzee. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. How are you doing, Jane? Um, well, to be honest, I've never worked as hard in my entire life. And, you know, it's, I thought that being 300 year, days a year on the road was, was exhausting, but it was nothing compared to being a virtual Jane, where I'm accessible to JGIs and other, other groups all around the world every day. And I'm, it's, it's crazy, but there yeah. we are crazy times that we're all going through at the moment. I mean, this pandemic has changed your life as, as you have already mentioned completely. Who knows you knows that you have been traveling around the globe nearly the whole year. Now you're grounded in England. So how did you cope with this situation at the very beginning? And how have you spent the last few months and weeks? Well, I started off being frustrated and angry when I was, I call it grounded in UK, but fortunately, I was grounded in the um, the house where I grew up, where I'm speaking to you from now. And so all my things are here and it was much better than being grounded and being caught in some far off place. So I was, I've been here with my family, my sister and her family. And um, I, having been frustrated and angry, I decided that wasn't any use. So we created this virtual Jane and this virtual Jane, as I say, has been busier than than I've ever been in my whole life, and it's pretty exhausting. And I, you know, you 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 have to give a lecture, for example. You look at a little spot on the top of your your laptop, and you don't get the feedback that you get if you go into a big auditorium with people 
clapping and, and laughing and all the rest of it. So it takes a whole lot of extra energy, but that's what I had to do in order to make virtual game of as much of a reality as possible. So that's what I have been doing nonstop every day, Zooms and Skypes and podcasts and webinars and video messaging, interviews, uh, you name it, I do it day after day after day. People say, have a nice weekend. When does the weekend? It doesn't for me. So that's my life right now. Yeah, who knows? You know that you never stand still. Don't stop to push your projects or and to give people reasons for hope. So, um, wow, it's amazing what you're doing day for day. And uh, it's amazing how much energy you have. I know that it's exhausting to do lots of video conferences. By the way, have you counted how many video conferences, video messages and online events you have done so far since March? <laughs> Do I know how many? No, I haven't the faintest <laughs> idea how many. I mean, you have to ask my, my little team that creates virtual Jane, Jane, like Mary Lewis from UK, who tries to organize my schedule. I think she finds it very difficult. It keeps her exhausted as well as me. Yeah. This is one more, but you will agree this is a very special one, as special as this silent auction. And I mean, it's amazing what Doris Schreifogel and the team here in Austria, as well as the European colleagues, have organized within a very short time. So what would you say, what does this silent auction mean to you personally, Jane, and for the Jane Goodall Institutes? Well, what it means is that if people are generous and have the Christmas spirit, and care about the future and care about saving the planet, they really bid for the items. And if they don't want the item, maybe they can give it away as a gift or, you know, something like that. And so what it means to me is let's see how this auction can fill up the coffers of JGI so that we can continue doing what we do to make the world a better place for people, animals and the environment. I'm sure that this silent auction will be a big success. And I know, Jane, that you have also donated some very personal items. We will be talking about some other items, having a close connection to you and your work a little bit later. And I'm sure you will be charging them up with personal stories and emotions. And uh, we're all looking forward to that, of course. But the next 20 minutes are yours reserved for your virtual lecture that lots of people are already waiting for. Only one hint for all of you who are watching this live stream right now. You have the possibility to ask questions to Jane, just type them into the chat. Some of them will be picked out and will be answered at after Jane's lecture. But now the time has come. Jane, the floor is yours. Take it away. I will take it away. And please tell me if at any point uh, my voice becomes disjointed or breaks up because I don't want to go on talking in that case. So let me say that, first of all, it would be lovely if we were doing this auction and I was there in person because that, that's always the best. But thanks to COVID-19, thanks to this pandemic, we're all separated and some people are listening in from different parts of the world. And this pandemic, COVID-19, has caused immense suffering uh, to people all around the planet, loss of life, loss of loved ones, loss of jobs, economic chaos. It's completely changed the working of the planet. And the tragedy is that we brought this upon ourselves. We brought it upon ourselves by our absolute disrespect of the natural world and animals. So what do I mean by that? We destroy habitats. This pushes some animals in closer contact with people. We invade their habitats, their homes. And we build roads and dams. Uh, there's the extractive industries, mining and, and logging and oil and gas exploration. And we hunt them, kill them and eat them. We traffic them, we catch, we catch them, the young ones, we send them or their body parts around the world. We sell them in the wildlife markets of Asia and of Africa. 
we sell them in the ever growing um, international trade in exotic animals as pets. And in all of these situations, we create environments where animals who are sold in the, in the wildlife markets and the African bushmeat markets are in cramped conditions. They're incredibly stressed, they're frightened, they're filled with fear, they're being sold for meat, for medicine, or, or for pets. And these wildlife markets provide perfect environments for uh, a virus or a bacteria, but in this case, COVID-19 is a virus, to jump from an animal to a human. When it does that, it may create a new disease, in this case, COVID-19. Unfortunately for us, COVID-19 incredibly, uh, incredibly contagious and has spread around the world, causing all this absolute chaos and change in lifestyle for hundreds of thousands of people. And we haven't to forget that there are all of these intensive animal farms, factory farms, where billions of domestic animals, cows, pigs, poultry, and so on, are kept in most horrendous, cruel, cramped, and often unhygienic conditions. That too provides opportunities for bacteria to jump from animal to human. And so it's our absolute disrespect of animals that has caused not only this pandemic, but other epidemics, other what so-called zoonotic diseases, a zoonotic disease when a, a bacteria, a pathogen jumps from an animal to a human. And as we emerge from this pandemic, as we shall, we're getting closer to a vaccine. We're beginning to understand we'll be confronted by the ongoing and far greater threat to the existence of all life on the planet, including our own, which is climate change, also caused by our absolute disregard of the natural world. And it's crazy to think we can have unlimited economic development on a planet with finite natural resources, which already in some places are being used up faster than nature can replenish them. And this is on a planet with growing populations of humans and their livestock. Right now, there's approximately 7.8 billion humans on the planet. I forget the number of livestock, but it's in double figures. And by 2050, it's predicted there'll be closer to 10 billion of us. So if we carry on with business as usual, if we carry on with this absurd notion that there can be unlimited economic development on this planet of finite resources and carry on with business as usual, what's going to happen? I don't know, but we've got to think about it. And as we think about climate change and how that's affecting nations all around the planet, everywhere and I've seen the results with my own eyes, the melting of the ice in the polar regions, the rising sea levels that are causing people to leave their, their island or their coastline homes because at high tide they're no longer habitable. The horrifying results of the ever worse hurricanes and typhoons and uh, the the worst droughts and the worst floods and the terrifying wildfires last year raging through Australia and still this year and, and um, currently in parts of the United States. For the first time ever, we've seen wildfires in the Arctic Circle. So if we carry on like this, does that mean we don't care about the future of life on Earth? Does it mean we don't care about the planet. You know, we are part of the natural world. We're not separated from it as some people like to think. We depend on it. And if we continue to destroy the natural world at this rate, that's the end of our species on the planet. So is there a window of hope? 
Some scientists say no, but luckily I'm not the only one to say we have a window of time, but we need to get together. We need to get together to create a new kind of relationship with the natural world. We need to get together to create a new kind of economy, a more sustainable economy, a greener economy. We need to think about a different, a different char um, characteristic of what does it mean to be successful? Must it always be tied to acquiring more and more wealth, more and more stuff, more and more power? Or can we have a definition of success that means to create for yourself a life where you can be happy, where you can support your family, where you can do some things that you love to do, where you can go out in nature and be spiritually revived. That's what we have to try to create. And my reasons for hope that we can indeed move in this direction and finally emerge from the situation in which we are today, which is grim and dark, it's dark politically, environmentally, and socially. How do, we, how do we come out of this? Well, first of all, there's the, the resilience of nature. We destroy a place, give it time, maybe some help, and places that used to be beautiful that we've covered with cement or cut, clear cut the forests, given time, we can allow nature to reclaim those places. There's so many examples of that. There's so many examples of animals on the brink of extinction that have been given another chance. And as we destroy biodiversity, we impact ecosystems. So helping to preserve biodiversity in different places is helping to preserve the future for our children and theirs. And my next reason for hope is this amazing intellect, the thing that makes us more different from any other animal than anything else. And already scientists are coming up with incredible technology that will help us live in greater harmony with nature. And in addition to that, each one of us can use our intellect to think about our own environmental footstep as we walk through life. How can we live lives that are more friendly to the natural world? How can we help each day to save the natural world? And then we have to realize that until we can alleviate poverty, then this utopia can never exist because if you're very poor, you're going to destroy the last trees in your desperate effort to grow more food, kill the last fish, in your desperate effort to feed your family in an urban area, you're going to buy the cheapest food in order to survive. You can't afford to say, how was it made? Did it harm the environment? Was it cruel to animals? And so on. You just have to survive. And my next reason for hope is the power of young people. And that's the Jane Goodall Institute's youth program, Roots and Shoots, all around the world in 68 countries and growing are young people from kindergarten through university choosing projects to make the world a better place, choosing projects to grow trees, trees that will absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, to try and clear up the pollution, the plastic in the oceans, which also can absorb CO2 from the atmosphere until it's too polluted. And these young people are my greatest reason for hope. Everywhere I go, young people with shining eyes wanting to tell Dr. Jane what they've been doing to make this a better world. And then on top of that, there's the indomitable human spirit. People who tackle what seems impossible and won't give up and so often succeed. And if they don't succeed, they manage to inspire other people so that in the end, their vision will become truth. And you know, there's icons like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King and so on. But there's also so many just ordinary people who are tackling 
social problems that seem so difficult. Immigrants coming in from other countries, not knowing the language, not being discriminated against. And yet they managed to set up a little business for themselves, maybe selling secondhand clothes or something like that. And in spite of all that they've endured, if you go in and bother to talk to them and smile, they'll smile back to you. And if you ask, they'll tell you their story. Some of these stories are absolutely inspirational. And finally, there are those people struggling with physical disabilities that would have most of us cowering at home and never daring to show our face outside. People who, well, I'll give you one example, and that's Chris Cock, born in Canada, with no arms and no legs, just little tiny things on his shoulders that might have once been arms, I suppose, and coming out of his thigh is something that maybe it was a foot. He goes around on a skateboard. He jumps up from the floor beside you on the sofa. You look into his face, his eyes. You see somebody brimming with the joy and the love of life and intelligence. And the last time I met him, I said, Chris, has anybody offered you artificial limbs? And he, he smiled. He said, yes, they have but I think maybe I was put together like this for some reason. So I think I'll stay as I am. And then his eyes twinkled and he said, however, I might take them up on their offer when I decide to climb Mount Everest. That is the perfect example of an indomitable spirit. But this indomitable spirit that we all have, if we will just realize it, and allow it out there and to grow. It also includes generosity and care for the future and care for our fellow beings, human or otherwise. And this auction is all about really calling upon all of you listening to show that spirit of generosity that will help us, JGI, to make this a better world so that you can join us in this effort to make this a better world for animals, for people, for the environment. And maybe there's an auction item you don't really want, but you could bid for it because maybe it's something that somebody else really wants. And what a wonderful gift. Or you could bid for it just because you want to help. And so I encourage everybody to show that indomitable spirit to show that spirit of generosity to show that spirit of wanting to help to make this a better world in the in the silent auction that starts tonight and i gather continues throughout the weekend thank you Th thank you so much Jane. wow thanks for being such a big inspiration i've once again goosebumps all over as i always have to be honest and i can tell you this is balm on our souls in times like this thank you so much i can tell you jane that about 500 people are watching this live stream at the moment people from around the globe and we got lots of messages people who thank us that they have the possibility to listen to you and thank you for your great and amazing work that you do. And of course, we also have some questions and um, there are three of them that we have selected. Maybe let's start with one that is addressing this COVID topic once again, maybe from another angle. Um, Voita wants to know, have any cases of COVID-19 in wild chimpanzees already have been registered? Fortunately, no, that doesn't mean there haven't been any because clearly we're not out with chimpanzees throughout Africa, but certainly in the JGI projects and sanctuaries of chimpanzees across Africa, chimpanzees and, um, and, and gorillas, nor in the orangutans of Asia, there's been no recorded case. But these great apes are very susceptible to respiratory diseases, which of course uh, COVID-19 is. And so we've had to work really hard to do our very best to try and protect the chimpanzees, giving the staff masks and special protective gear and sanitizing with food 
and trying to give to give uh, to educate the people living around the wildlife areas it's cost us a lot of extra money and that's why any generosity will help us to fill in those gaps in the budget which nobody could have predicted every one of us make, can make a difference every day that's what we always say and tonight lots of people 500 are watching this stream will have the chance to maybe bid for all the fantastic items that are offered in the silent auction but before we move to the silent auction we still have two questions left more of, the, of them but due to a stiff timetable we can only take the two of them and i know that you will like this question because you already mentioned that young people give you most of your hope and Anne Valentine wants to know what are things you are most interested in as a child and how did you know that you would pursue your passion and what hint would you give to young children to children and young people well when I, w I was born loving animals and you know when I grew up it was World War II and there was no television even I learned from books and when I was 10, I found Tarzan of the Apes. That was when my dream began. I will grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. As everybody knows, eventually that came true. But the main thing which I want to share with young people is that when I had this dream, most people laughed at me. How would I do that? Africa was far away. We didn't have any money. We had very, very little money. I mean, secondhand clothes and everything. And um you're just a girl you will never do that why don't you dream about something you can achieve not my mother my amazing mother who's up here behind me here she is always with me and she just said if you really want this you're going to have to work terribly hard take advantage of all opportunity but if you don't give up you may find a way that's the message i take to young people all around the world particularly to people in disadvantaged communities, sometimes particularly to girls. So follow your heart and your dreams. That's one of your most important messages that I always carry in my heart, to be honest. And there's one uh, question left. Um, Stephen, he's a teacher, asks you, how can we help to create animal welfare, environmental awareness and sensitivity with younger generations? Well, Clearly, my answer is going to be to that teacher. Please find out about and get your students involved in Roots and Shoots because that's what we're all about. And we have a, a project right now which is talking about the fact that animals like us have personalities, minds, and above all, emotions, that they're sentient beings. And you, you've only got to look at YouTube and select carefully those those videos that clearly are genuine and it's pretty easy to tell and there are so many examples there that show clearly that animals are, are you know are completely different there's um look up not picasso the artist but pig picasso and you'll see something that will make you laugh but make you think pig picasso is a rescued pig in a animal farm sanctuary in South Africa, whose rescuer is an artist. Just watch Picasso paint. Somebody said to me, I'll never eat bacon again. So I said, why do you think I showed you? But then the most recent film that's, that's causing so much stir, it's wonderful. And I, I think it's on Netflix, I'm not sure, but anyway, you can find it. It's called My Octopus Teacher by Craig Foster, absolutely amazing. So it shows, it's not just apes and elephants and, um, uh, and lions and dolphins and whales and crows, but octopus. So how do you, how do you help your young people, your students to understand this? Show them videos, show them pictures, tell them stories and then they'll find out for themselves. So Roots and Shoots is one of your fascinating programs for young people. I can only underline that it's always special. Uh, last year, we had a presentation with lots of young people in Austria. They 
collected all the ideas for saving the planet and it was really a big inspiration which ideas they had. So Roots and Shoots, one of the big programs that you should follow. So I would say, Jane, together we can make the difference. And this leads us now back to the silent auction. Um, we will now present some of the items of the exhibits, of course, first of all, those that have a clear connection to you and to work. And I'm happy that you stay with me and hopefully will support me so that we get lots of money and lots of people motivate to bid for all the really fantastic items. So thanks for staying in the stream. But Jane, we will get help. We get help and support also from an expert who came to our little studio here in Vienna. He's an art historian. Due to his family tradition, he became an art dealer. His job is, as he described it, and that's fantastic, to feel the flame to awake enthusiasm for art. And that's exactly what we want to do tonight. So welcome and good evening, Alexander Giese. So this welcome. is your virtual applause. <laughs> welcome. And thank you for coming and supporting us. Well, um, it's a pleasure and it's, um, it's a great pleasure and honor to, to meet the virtual chain. And <laughs> I hope that I sometime have the chance, a chance to meet the, the live chain, the real chain. So um, maybe in the near future we have, a, we have a possibility. But thank you for the evening. I'm and sure. I'm still real, even though I'm virtual. I'm very real, I promise you. Right now, I'm being real. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy that you're here, Jane. I'm happy that you're here, Alexander, and support us a little bit. I mean, you have already had a look at the whole catalog, this online catalog, offering all the items that are in the catalog for this silent auction. What first impression did you get? Well, my first impression was um, um, very, very impressive, I have to say. I mean, nowadays, you have a lot of um, auction offerings that are very special, specialized into a certain field. And um, when I flipped through the catalog, I saw a lot of different pieces from a lot of different fields. So it's really something for everybody in this in this offering. And I think they have a good chance. So we have a good chance to make a lot of people happy tonight. Yeah, we will make a lot of people happy tonight. And we hopefully will make Jane happy tonight. There are about 100 different items. We can't, of course, present all of them, but we now want to pick out those that have a clear connection to Jane and to her work. There is a chapter named Jane and Chimps in this um, online catalog. And um, I want to start with the first item. It is a painting. A painting, well, that has a special artist who painted it, unbelievable but true, it is a chimpanzee, a chimpanzee called Blackie Jane. And the story behind is as fascinating as the painting itself, isn't it? Yeah, the story behind Blackie. Unfortunately, it's a story that's mirrored by many other chimpanzees. And one thing the Jane Goodall Institute does is care for orphan chimpanzees who've lost their mothers due to our shooting them for various reasons. Blackie was one of the chimps shot way back in the late 50s in Central Africa. And as was common in those days, she was sold to a circus in, in Switzerland. And she was trained very cruelly, it turns out, to perform in a circus. And in between shows, she was sometimes fostered by a couple who eventually founded the Walter Zoo in Switzerland, which JGI now has worked with for some time. Blackie is still alive. Blackie uh, was finally rescued from her cruel trainer and she was introduced to her first chimpanzee companion since her mother was shot in the wild. And amazingly, this chimpanzee who has far greater bonds with humans than chimpanzees actually gave birth to a child and actually two children, which is pretty amazing. And so the first question I asked uh, the Walter Zoo is, you know, was she a good mother to these, to these infants? Because normally a chimpanzee with a disturbed background can't, can't cope with the baby. They don't know what to do because they normally learn from their parents. So anyway, Blackie turns out was an amazing mother, but she also 
loves to paint. Some chimpanzees do, other chimpanzees don't. And her infant, her first infant learned to paint, loves painting, sometimes paints with his mother. But this particular piece of art is painted by Blackie. And each chimpanzee has his or her own individual style. And the very first time chimpanzees were exhibited was in an art gallery in London. And that was way back in the 60s. And so all these art experts gave their opinion of this art. Well, they, they weren't told it was a chimpanzee. And they got very angry because they made themselves look stupid talking about the, the, you know, what was behind this painting and all the meaning and all the rest of it. And when they learned it was a chimpanzee, they were kind of upset. But, you know, chimpanzees, some of them love to paint. And this is a painting by a chimpanzee with a history which sadly documents our inhumanity, but eventually the way that we turn around and show our humanity in saving them. So this painting is as special as the artist, chimpanzee Blackie. By the way, I read somewhere that her son Machibu, um, he tended to paint together with her. Is that right? They were painting together on one paper. Do you know that, Jane? I don't know. I okay, was told okay. it was I just Blackie. Okay. But I haven't seen the painting, so I, don't, I can't answer that Okay, question. but I guess they were painting together, but this is a picture painted by Blackie only. Alexander, I mean, that's something special. An um, animal-made art is spe special itself, mm -hmm. and this really emotional story makes it more valuable. How do you think about that? It does, it does make it valuable, and um, I think it's kind of tough now to be <laughs> an art expert after Jane um, <laughs> <laughs> was <t> telling <laughs> about those art experts. Um, so I'll, I'll try my best, but um, it's a very, I can, I can say some very personal words. Then um, when, I, when I saw it for the first time, um, it put a smile on my face, this, this drawing. And then I thought, well, this is what art is all about, to give us a good, good time, to, to make us happy. and. If it if an artwork does so, it doesn't really matter um, whether it has been done by a human being or a chimpanzee, and um, it's very very emotional. And now that I that I hear your story about Blackie and 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 um, the way she she um, she was painting makes it even more valuable. Yeah, absolutely right. It's something really special. I mean, I could imagine that this picture could also decorate my home, yeah. maybe your home or your home. This could be the perfect Christmas gift. So if you want to bid for this painting, painting, just register on our auction platform and go for it, I would say. Go for it. This is what I can say. Well, Jane, talking about chimps, there are, of course, some other exhibits um, in the auction. And I want to pick another one that is, I would say, a real highlight. It is a unique tool created and used by a wild chimpanzee in Senegal. And I mean, this works, uh, this, this, this art stands for your work and for the revolutionary discovery that you made in the 60s, isn't it? Yes, and you know, I still remember with a feeling of awe the first time I saw a chimpanzee use a grass stem similar to the one that's shown here, that, that, that's um, in, this, in this, um, ex uh, this auction item. And it was David Graybeard. David Graybeard, the first chimpanzee to lose his fear of me. I've lost him. Here he is. Here he is. <laughs> David Graybeard was very, very special. And uh, it was he who first lost his fear of me and he whom I saw not only picking grass stems to use them to fish for termites from their underground um, burrows, nests, but also to pick leafy twigs and to use them as tools, he had to strip the leaves and the side twigs. And up until that point, it was thought that humans and only humans used and made tools. We were defined as man the tool maker. And it was that observation and I didn't actually report it until I'd seen other chimpanzees. I, I first thought maybe I dreamed it, but then I saw other chimpanzees. It was the beginning of the termite fishing season. And that observation brought the National Geographic in to provide funding for me to carry on with my research in 1960 when the first six months money ran out. And they sent 
a filmmaker, Hugo van Nauwijk, to actually record all of these amazing things that more and more and more I was learning that chimpanzees did. So we now know that in different parts of Africa, chimpanzees use different objects as tools in different contexts. And in most places, they used a number of different objects for, for, for getting food or for cleaning themselves or for getting water. Gombe, it's about nine different situations. So this, this, this is a, a very special auction item because it's the actual tool that was used by chimpanzees in Senegal. Senegal, which represents the most extreme environment of chimpanzees in Africa. It's very hot, it's very dry. And yet, uh, JGI Spain is working there to learn about these chimpanzees, to work with the local people, to help them understand the importance of protecting the environment. Protecting the environment for the chimps is protecting their own future. So this, this item is, it's not just what you see framed, it's the whole feeling behind it of understanding that we are not the only beings to have culture. So do chimpanzees and other animals too. So this you can brag about when you hang it up on your wall. I've got something really, really special here and something that changed the whole future for Jane in those early 1960s. Amazing. I mean, Alexander, this is not only a piece of art, it's a piece of history. Do you agree? Yeah. It is. Um, and this is really turning into a very, very tough task um, to be um, talking after Jane, um, after all those um, informations about, about those um, pieces. But um, what you can really do is you can, you can buy a, a piece of history. And I think it's all the pieces are signed by Jane and they come along with the certificate so this is not a stick this is this is um, a proof that um, mankind n gained knowledge through your work and um, I think it's um, to have something at home I think is is a great is a great honor and um, so once again uh, go for it <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah, please, go, please go for it yeah, go for it and i can add that this item is not only including a photo and is not only having a signature but jane also added a handwritten note to that that's making it even more special so if you are interested in just bidding for a piece of history and purchasing it then you should register sign in we keep our fingers crossed that you are the highest bid. Good, good luck. Well, and last but not least, I would say this is the icing on the cake, Alexander and Jane. Um, only one, only one of you who would take part in this auction can and will have the possibility to have, it's unbelievable but really cool, a private talk with Dr. Jane Gora. I mean, that's really amazing. Alexander, this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. What do you say? I would call it a, a life changing moment for anybody. I think it's um, every meeting with some somebody could um, make a difference to your life. And uh, I think there's there's not that many people more inspiring than Jane Goodall. And um, so if, if you really want to to have um, a moment of, of, of truth and uh, since i've been here i've been listening to jane and you have already changed my life a little bit so um, i think when you when you really have the opportunity to to spend half an hour directly with um, jane godall this might cause a major difference in your life um to the better i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure too. maybe you'll bid for it yes <laughs> <laughs> let me take my phone <laughs> maybe, you will, maybe i will maybe you will but i can tell you every encounter with jane is a gift this could be uh your personal account and a once in a lifetime opportunity jane do you want to add something i mean is there something you expect, expect from the highest bidder well, no, I, I would simply say that uh, to the highest bidder, uh, I, I would be extremely grateful because I know that our programs 
at changing the world. I live to change the world. I'm already 86, closer to 87. I don't know how much longer I have, but you know, my hope is that we create, uh, we create a critical mass of people who understand that money is important to live, but we shouldn't live for money. And I will be so happy to talk about whatever the highest bidder wants. They might want to talk about their children. They might want to talk about their dogs or their cats. They might want to talk about, I don't know, life beyond COVID. They might want to talk about climate change. But whatever they want to talk about, I promise you, I will do my best to enter into that conversation and try and answer questions or discuss or whatever it is that this highest bidder wants. So it's, it's up to you. I, I just offer myself, my limited, you know, whatever I can contribute. <laughs> That's a lot. As all the people have written in the chat, we are all so grateful that you're here tonight. And we really hope that this private talk uh, raises lots of money because this is something really special. So just register bid for this really, really special item. Maybe you are the one who will ap have a private talk with Dr. Jane Goodall. Of course, it will be the virtual Jane so far <laughs> as we are all in the middle of this pandemic. But believe me, every encounter with Jane is a real gift. And gift is now <laughs> also <laughs> the key word because Jane, we have a special gift or Alexander has brought a special gift with him. Alexander. You can show it maybe to this camera. Yes, um, I did um, in my in my in the past um, few days when I was preparing for this evening, I was uh, thinking about my my own work and um, what I what I enjoy doing, and I was going through my um, stock and I found this and um, um, this is a, a drawing by an Austrian artist. Um, Ludwig Heinrich Jungnickel, and it was done around 1920, so that was 40 years before you found out about the chimpanzee sticks. And um, I don't know his name, but what we know for sure, he's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I, I thought that I could have I could have brought this earlier, so it could be included in the auction. But I'm sure that there will be another auction, and maybe on your next visit to Vienna, you could you could maybe because there's a lot of space, white space on the back, so you could <laughs> sign it, <laughs> and then we could include it um, um, to the next auction, and um, or you can do whatever you want with it. You can hang it um, maybe behind you in your home but um, I think we will see it again, so. I think we should put it into an auction and I'm sure whoever made that drawing would absolutely love that his drawing, I presume it was a him, uh, since he painted a, a boy chimpanzee, I'm sure he would love to think that his drawing was helping to save the chimpanzees. Yes. And you know, my first big battle with the establishment was when I wrote an article for the prestigious uh, scientific journal Nature about chimpanzee tool using. And of course, I talked about David Greybeard and Flo and some of the other chimpanzees, talked about he did this and she did that. Mm -hmm. And every time I've written he and she or who, it was crossed out and substituted was it and which. And I thought, they're trying to deny chimpanzees their sexuality. That picture showed you. It's very clear, as you said, that <laughs> this was a male chimpanzee. They also have big balls. Okay. And <laughs> so I angrily crossed out the he's and the she's and the witches and put back, I mean, the, the it's and the witches and put back he, she, and who, and they left it. So it was my first victory was to give chimpanzees the dignity of their individual sexes. Well, if I c but just uh, quickly, I'm um, speaking of big balls. I think that's a good word. I mean, you need big balls to be in an auction and you need big balls to be the high bidder. So just to remember you, <laughs> um, show, <laughs> show them now. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you're right. And there is- I will, I will add one thing to this last auction item. Yeah, that I of course. I will commit to, if possible, 
meeting the highest bidder in person at some point. Okay. I can't promise it, but I will commit to trying to meet that person for a little private conversation when COVID-19 allows it and I'm somewhere in the same vicinity as whoever is the highest bidder. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So I guess that this item will be one of the <laughs> the favorite ones. Um, and we hope so. So I can tell you that the whole auction starts tonight and ends on the 24th of yes. November. Of course, Jane, everyone can also donate completely independently from this auction. Um, we will show later on how it works. Well, Jane, and there's one thing I just want to add. I know that there are also some personal items that you donated. So I heard there is a special scarf, isn't it? Well, yeah, one or two. I I can't remember what they are now because <laughs> there's various auctions and I'm always donating myself, my time, uh, various artifacts, various bits of clothing. And, um, you know, I mean, there's 24 Jane Goodall Institutes, every single one of them working to make the world a better place. And I try to support them all. So whatever items you have here are donated with my 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 passion for raising money to make this a better world yeah and we can feel the passion right now and are all deeply impressed as we always are of course alexander and me will a little bit later on present some of the other items to be found in this catalog uh wow jane what do you personally expect from this silent auction I expect lots and lots and lots of money to help JGI make this a better world. Is that not enough? <laughs> That's enough. And we hope that lots of money can be raised for the really fascinating projects in Africa. Well, now we let you rest. I hope that this was your last online activity for tonight. Was it? Jane? Was it your Sorry, last? Again. Uh, was it your last online activity for tonight? Um, I've got a ten o'clock call oh, wow. with the founder of the Jane Goodall Institute Global and some of our key global players around the world. Now, ten o'clock my time. That's eleven o'clock for you, and that's after three different lectures today. So, that's the typical typical Jane day. <laughs> it's a typical Jane day, so the more we now let you rest. Say so thank you so much for participating this event, for helping us to launch this silent auction. Thanks for again being a big inspiration. We love to watch you, talk to you and listen to you. We are sending you lots of love from Vienna. Are there any bye-bye words for our audience around the globe, Jane? Well, and I send my love to you in Vienna and everybody around the world too. And I already gave you a chimpanzee greeting. So now in lieu of the COVID-19 restrictions, what we can do is blow kisses around the world. Oh yeah, we will do that. <laughs> we are blowing kisses to you from Vienna to the UK. Blow a kiss. Come on, Alexander. Bro, Alexander, bro. come on. Yes, we can blow lots it. of kisses. <laughs> thank you so much, Jane. We hope to see you in person next year. We're looking forward yes. to that. Please yes. take care of yourself. Stay healthy. And lots of kisses again. And bye, Dr. Jane Goodall. Bye, Jane. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> please be generous with the auction, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Jane. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, wow. Mm. An amazing woman, isn't she? I already miss her. Yeah, me uh, too. Yeah, two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> but the two of us will go on, Alexander, because there are lots of other items that could be of interest for our um, audience from around the globe. And I want to add one thing, because we saw Jane and uh, um, had the opportunity to listen to all the amazing stories. All of you who will be the lucky highest bidders and purchase an item will get a thank you card signed by Jane on top. So that's cool. Alexander, uh, let's now move on to some other exhibits. We have some more highlights reserved. And of course, our aim is to leave our audience gasping for more. <laughs> so there is one piece of art 
that we've picked out for this presentation. It's a special one. The artist is an Austrian artist, author, uh, author a poet, singer, songwriter and actor. We all know him. It's Andre Heller. And the painting is a very special one named Versteckt im Glück. I mean, Andre Heller is a multi-talented all-rounder, as we know. How um, do you value this painting? What is your view on it? Well, uh, it's it's more the the person behind it. Andre Heller is somebody everybody knows in Austria, and he's a very inspiring man. And I think that's what um, the two of them have in common. I mean, you won't find anybody more inspiring than Jane Goodall. Um, Andre Heller comes close, and I think what what really m makes them um, similar in, in in a way is that they are visionaries, right? And they both of them follow their dreams and make things happen, and I think that gives a lot of hope. And I think that this piece is just an example of of his work. So if you if you have the chance to to own a piece of Andre Heller, it's it's for some people it's probably more even more important than a piece by Jane Goodall. But you have something at home that that you can really um, lean on to and get some power from. To get power from this painting, that is. Um really a good um, description. I mean, to have a genuine Hella in the living room could be something special. Maybe this is the perfect Christmas gift for somebody who might be interested in Andre Hella and his work. And um, if you are interested or if you think this could be the perfect match a and also a perfect gift for somebody or even something that you are giving yourself a treat with, then please sign in. You can scroll through the whole online catalog already and can find not only this only Andre Heller picture, but also lots of other interesting paintings in this catalog. Well, there are lots of paintings, so art is one of the topics in this catalog. Another topic and another um, chapter is ladies only, <laughs> that's the name, and it's of course all about fashion. So I really know that the next piece will let all women's hearts beat a little bit faster, I'm sure it will, because it's an extraordinary bag designed by Stella McCartney. And by the way, Stella McCartney is one of the good friends of, uh, of Jane. She supports her work, or has been supporting her work for um, some years, and Stella McCartney also stands for ethical and sustainable fashion. The, this bag is the best example, you can see it. And the bag is in pink, is available in pink and in black. So those are the two colors. Wow, I mean, amazing. A vegan bag called Falabella bag designed by Stella McCartney. Alexander, I mean, why should I buy or bid for a bag that I could buy anywhere else? Well, uh, I'm not the handbag <laughs> kind of guy, um, <laughs> <Normally> honestly. <laughs> um, so I can cannot really tell you anything about the the um, what what makes you buy it because it, it's just something missing inside me um, that realizes that I want to have this bag. But I'm sure there's a lot of ladies out there being eager um, going for this because that's exactly what what they want. And uh, that's the good thing about charity auctions. You, you, will, you will get a bag, and you will get a bag, and on top of that, you will have a good, good feeling, a good notion about that, because you are donating. And that's why um, this is the chance to buy it. Don't buy it in a store. Um, take this one, and uh, as we said, you get a written note by Jane Goodall alongside. And <laughs> once again, this is, this is the chance. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. This is a really iconic bag. And if you need a special gift for your wife, for your girlfriend, for your mother, for your grandma, for whomever, I would love to, to have this bag, to be honest. We have two of them, a black and a pink one. Just click in, scroll through and bid for it. Well, so Alexander, we've heard there's some items with a strong connection to Jane and the Chimps. We had two of them before art, not only this Andre Heller painting, but lots of others in the catalogue. Fashion, not only the back, but of course other items. And there are more items in the field of sport, travel. I remember very well that there is um, a safari trip to Tanzania you can bid for. Gourmet vouchers, um, 
entertainment, for instance, just to name Arnold Schwarzenegger, you can bid for a frame photo signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's only one of the examples, and other experiences, and experience means, for instance, encounters with personalities. And one of, it, of them is Richard Latkani. Have you ever heard about him? Yeah, you told me. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I did, s obviously, I did some research. And um, I think that's, that's uh, one important fact about Jane Goodall and the Institute and the work is that they need, you need, we need people who are spreading the word, right? right? And um, who, who, who spread this inspiration and um, uh, being, being in the motion picture field, I think it's he's a very powerful man and he can do a lot of good things. And I think speaking to somebody like him can make a, a difference, right? Yeah, so Richard Latkani is, by the way, also one of the honorary ambassadors of the Jane Goodall Institute Austria. And he has a close connection and, uh, uh, with Jane. He has accompanied here for some years. He's Austria's or one of Austria's most renowned filmmakers. You might know the internationally so successful documentary thriller The Ivory Game. It was on the Oscar shortlist. Also this year, Sea of Shadows, co-produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. So he was the one, and you can bid on a private talk, so a personal conversation with Richard. Well, you could, ins for instance, ask him what it is like to work with a star like Leonardo DiCaprio. Here he is, together with Jane. Or maybe he, m he can draw a secret. Uh, you could, could draw a secret from him about filmmaking, his work, or his friendship with Jane. So a special moment that could arise as soon as somebody is the highest bidder, isn't it, Alexander? Sure will be, right? <laughs> 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 it will be. And by the way, experiences, there are lots of, uh, of them in this catalog. A ticket for two, for instance, for Elton John's Oscar viewing party. That's really cool. And much more. So this was an overview of the highlights, so to say, Jane and Jim's and also some other items that can be found in the silent auction. Uh, you can bid for your favorite items from today onwards to the 24th of November. And last but not least, let us show you and tell you how does it work. So let's have a look at the platform together and show you how you can sign in and how you can bid. So maybe we can show the platform right now or the process so that I can show you what you actually have to do. So you click on janegoodall.at, silent auction 2020, and then on the button, start the auction. Now you can see, you can scroll through and see all the really fantastic items. If there is something that makes your heart beat, like this one, for instance, then click on it and then you can not only find lots of information about the item itself, but sign up as you can see, and there you have to enter your data, so your email, Doris Schreifogel, Managing Director of the Jane Goodall Institute Austria, did it for us. By the way, she and her team did a fantastic job organizing this silent auction. So you need a password, then you can sign up, then you have to register with your name, and you need your phone number as you will see right here. So Doris might get lots of phone calls tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doris. <laughs> and then you get a verification code per SMS. That's why you need your phone number. Type in the verification code and verify. And that's it. And then you can easily bid. So you see bidding is very simple. And we can show that. So if you want to bid on this bird carvings to in blue, you can put in your bid here and place the bid afterwards. That's it, so bidding is really simple and easy. Here we go, that's it, so your bid has been accepted in this case. And there's one other function that could be of interest and um, this is important, there is a heart here it is. Here it is. There, if you push the button hard, then you can make a donation and support Jane Goodall and her fantastic projects all over the world, especially in Africa. So, 
this is the platform. Alternatively, let me tell you that you have the possibility to place your bids or your donation requests by phone or email too, so don't worry, no problem at all. Uh, the J2R team is available for you also during the weekend, so you have Doris' phone number right now. <laughs> She's always available. And maybe Alexander, to close this silent auction and also explaining how it works, is there any tip from the expert how to to have the chance to grab the favorite item? Well, when I, when I learned something from my professional career as an art dealer, there's, there's nothing worse than not being able to buy something that you really wanted. So go for it. Um, the higher the bid you put in, the higher is the chance that you actually are the high bidder, that you actually win the item. And I think when you put in an amount and somebody is putting in another amount, you will get a notification. Did I get that right? Yes. That's so right. Um, you, can, you can always give it a second thought and a second chance. So no excuses, I would say. No excuses, and one information is left if you should be the highest bidder. And we're keeping our fingers crossed, of course, we do, Alexander. Uh, you will be informed immediately after this silent auction on Wednesday, the 25th of November. And if you are one of the lucky highest bidders, you will then receive your favorite exhibit by post, so within Europe. Well, we wish you luck. With the auction, keep our fingers crossed that you manage to grab your favorite item and hope that lots of money can be raised for the fantastic proje projects of the Jane Goodall Institutes. I would say, let's get started. Yes. Let's get started. And before we close this online event, let me say thank you. Thank you, Alexander, for supporting me here in yeah. our little studio in Vienna. It was a pleasure, thank you so much. And thanks to all our donators and of course to all our partners. Above all, thanks to Habecker Austria, Terra Mater Factory Studios, Einfallsreich, Julius Meindl Café and Bespoke. Thanks for supporting the work of Jane Goodall Institute Austria and for making events like this really successful. Thank you so much. Well, I would so say let us use this auction, ladies and gentlemen, to spread, as you said, Alexander, love, joy, and happiness to make a difference together. So good luck, have fun. I wish you and I wish us that we overcome these difficult times, find back to joy and happiness soon. Take care and stay healthy. And now we send you lots of kisses, as Jane taught us, from Vienna <laughs> to the rest of the world. Good night, thank you very much, and bye-bye. <laughs>